Hello the internet and welcome to my junkie garage and say hello to the 2009 Pontiac G8 GT. The title of this video is Pontiac G8 Autocross Contender? Question mark. And I'll start right off. The answer is no, not at all. It's a fun car, it's a quick car, but it is not an autocross contender. Let's run down some of the brief explanations as to why it's not. The car is heavy. It's 4,000 pounds without me in it. Uh, it's an automatic transmission. The Pontiac GTs only came in automatic. The only way to get a six-speed or a manual, I should say, is with the GXP model. And the GXP model right now, to get one in the type of condition that this car is in when I bought it, um, you're looking at 30 grand. And I, I'm not going to spend 30 grand on a eight or nine year old car. That just doesn't make sense to me. This car, I picked it up in December of 2016 for 195, and and that was still pretty high. That's the most expensive car I've ever I've ever bought. So, yeah, that's your issue there. Automatic. It's it's the seating position. Actually, I'll show you the seats real quick. The seats are nice and they're comfy, but they don't really give you a lot of support. And the other issue is, I'm six foot one on a good day, and with the seat kicked back as far as I can go, down as far as I can go, and the seat back as far as I can get it away from the steering wheel without being uncomfortable, I'm still bumping my head on the headliner. So maybe part of that is because it's got a sunroof, and you've got that little extra part that hangs down, but yeah, that's, a, that's an issue for me. The other issue is it's got a long wheelbase. The car's got 115 inch wheelbase and that's kind of tricky when you're dealing with slaloms and cones and stuff like that trying to move around. The other issue we have is that this car comes with pretty skinny tires from the factory. You've got 245, 40, 19s and the wheels are, nine, are 8 inches wide, 19 by 8s. So you can't really go much wider without starting to get some sidewall flex. And if you're talking autocross, there's a bunch of different schools of thought. Some people just say more is more when it comes to rubber and, and, and a contact patch on the ground. But some people also say that, you know, depending on that type of tire, if you get a sidewall that's doing this, or it's already bulged out, you know, trying to, trying to make it work onto a, a, a skinnier rim, you're gonna have handling issues. I haven't really experimented with that, but yeah, that's kind of your issue there. Big car, big power, but skinny little wheels and tires. Let's talk about the pros. This car has an L76 V8, and which is a kind of an LS2, LS3 hybrid kind of thing. Uh, from the factory, it made 361 horsepower. With the tune and the Rotofab intake that I have on it, it's probably pushing somewhere around 380, 390, something like that. It does have an automatic transmission, but it does have a manual select mode. So you can pop it over into manual and select your own gears, and it will completely hold the gears. Uh, so that's good. So you can you can grab second gear in this car and run around an autocross track, and that's pretty much all you need. With the torque of the engine, it, you don't need anything less, and, and because the gear is kind of tall, you don't need anything more. It is heavy, but it does have a 50-50 weight distribution, which is pretty nice. The car actually has some good manners when you're going through corners. So that's a good thing, the 50-50 weight distribution, plus it's got an independent rear end. So I'm not a big believer that the independent rear is the end-all be-all when it comes to cars. I had a Mustang GT before I had the Miata uh, 2006, and it was, it was a fun car to drive, and you can make a, a solid rear axle work. But the fact it's got an independent rear on this car, it just, it's nicer, it just makes it a little bit smoother. Now, another thing about this car that's nice is that it has, even though it's kind of a niche car, they only, made, they only brought these cars here for two years, as far as the G8 is concerned, it does have a decent little bit of aftermarket support because there's a, a nice fan base. This car was, was mass produced in Australia. It would never stop being produced in Australia. And uh, it shares a lot of parts with the Camaro, namely wheels, it doesn't these aren't of course Camaro wheels, but you can bolt Camaro wheels up to it without issue. Uh, the rear end you can even swap out a differential from a Camaro that slides, slides right in. 
So you've got some Camaro parts that'll swap out on this car. It's a similar kind of sort of structure. So now I'm gonna run you through the current mods list on the car as it stands right now. The, I won't lift the hood, but you get the idea. Uh, it's got a Rotofab intake on it. It's got a tune. The tune was done by David Griffin. Uh, he works for Hennessy, he works for SCT. The dude knows his stuff. When it comes to Chevys especially, he's on point. He actually tuned the car to where the uh, transmission in manual select mode will lock the torque converter in second gear. The car doesn't do that normally. Uh, he, he programmed it to where it does that, so now the car behaves a lot more like a manual car whenever uh, whenever you come off the gas. It, it, the engine pulls it down, it helps you with braking a little bit, and it helps you with that initial throttle response when you get back on it. Um, I've had this car, like I said, since December of 2016. It's currently July, well, end of June, beginning of July 2017. I've had it at five different events, and each time I've had something new on the car, so I'm still kind of learning as far as what the car likes and everything. Um, but yeah, anyway, Rotofab tune. We'll swing around. The brakes were upgraded by the previous owner. And now I don't know exactly what kind of pads he's running. I don't think they're anything special. But, uh, and, and I don't really know, honestly, compared to a stock brake setup, if this is even better. I assume it is, but I don't really know. And I don't know if the fluid's been changed. And it's got braided uh, stainless lines running in, in, the, in the back there. So, yeah. Um, beyond there, up in there-ish, behind the wheel, you've got uh, BMR in-links. Those came with the car, they just weren't installed. I installed those. It's got a stock front sway bar at the moment. That will probably change in time. Now we're at the rear. The rear uh, brake rotors have been changed as well. Uh, the pads, I uh, believe, have changed as well. The, the paint on the calipers, that was done by the previous owner. That's not necessarily my deal, but you know, it's fine. Uh, the uh, rear sway bar has been changed to a BMR, uh, it's back there, uh, BMR adjustable. Currently it's set in the firmest setting. I found that that tends to, that, that helped the car a little bit as far as uh, rear end behavior and, and grip coming out of the corners. It's also got uh, BMR bushing inserts into the rear. I made a separate video kind of talking about that. So those were nice. Oh, and in the front, it's got white line strut mount uh, bushings up and up under the hood. Those wear out over time. So those were changed out as well. Um, the mufflers, I changed those out. I bought like kind of a hack together setup. I made a video for it and that didn't, that didn't come out the way I wanted. But uh, it's just, it's a MagnaFlow hack muffler to kind of make it sound a little, a little bit throatier. It's nothing, nothing extreme. One other mod that I've made, and that's been a pretty serious one, has been changing the tires. This car came with some basic general G-Max tires, and I've swapped those out to go with the Federal 5, what is that, 595 RSRR. They are a 200 tread wear tire. I'll do a review on those later, but the, they've they made a nice difference, probably the single biggest difference. Currently the car is a mid-pack car in terms of raw times at any event. The last couple events I've gone to uh, with the tires, with the rear bar changed, um, with the suspension mods that it has right now, it's, it's about a mid-pack car. Um, the problem with this is I run this car in either Cam C, I can run it in STU, although I haven't, and I've also run it in SM just because there's nobody else really that was running SM that was good, that, that was really maxing out the rules. So I kind of took advantage of that. Uh, this car doesn't really fit well in any category because you're going to be placed up against either Mustangs and Camaros or like STI Subarus and, and wild stuff. So that's a problem. Hopefully down the road they'll come out with some classes for heavy four-door cars. That would be great. Please do that, whoever may watch this. But in the meantime, it's kind of an odd child, but I'm just mostly compared with raw times and where I stack up against everybody else. This video will serve as the starting point of a series of videos. We're gonna do a little bit more with autocross, me and this car. Uh, the next upgrades coming for it, or hopefully I'll be able to do an install video on them, but that's gonna be uh, Kony adjustables for the shocks and struts and H&R springs for uh, for all four corners as well.
To do the conies in the struts, you actually have to scavenge a set of stock struts. And it's called the coney cut a strut setup. And you actually have to butcher up a set of stock struts and the conies slide in as like inserts, which is gonna be really weird, but I'll do an install video on those. The goals behind modifying this car, I'll, I'll never be able to go for top times of day or, or, or any overall wins. I know that's pretty much impossible. Unless you gut this thing and turn it into a V8 supercar, you won't, you won't get there. As long as Corvettes and Miatas and STIs exist, this car will never be a top level contender. But I'm looking to get it up towards the higher end of the field. If I can break in say a field of 80, if I can get in a top 20, that would be pretty fantastic. So I think that's possible. And I think with the right parts and me learning how to drive it a little bit better, I think we can pull it off. So stay tuned. It's gonna be fun.